Square Enix has made both good and questionable decisions over the years. In today's video, it exemplifies them making one good decision and then on the other hand doubling down on a terrible one. And you should click that subscribe button so you can find out about all the decisions Square Enix makes here on this channel. But we'll start with the good news here, some news that I think is really encouraging and is absolutely the right track to be on. The Western console gaming market is far larger than the Japanese one. Because of this, many Japanese developers are trying to make their games to target Western audiences. Sometimes this causes Japanese developers to question their own taste in terms of aesthetic and game design, ultimately trying to make something that they think Westerners will like, when ultimately the appeal of Japanese games to Westerners is the fact that they aren't like Western games. With Yosuke Matsuda saying in an interview with Yahoo Japan, quote, Nowadays, the games market is globalized. The domestic market used to be big, but now it is behind China and the US. If you are not recognized globally, you are not in business. But interestingly, if Japanese developers try to imitate Western games, they cannot make good ones. The design of the monsters, and the visual and audio effects, are still somewhat Japanese, and players around the world know that this is what makes Japanese games good. Overseas markets are important, but it is not enough to only develop for them. This is great news and exactly what I want to hear. I think you're always better leaning into your strengths rather than your weaknesses, doing something authentic to you rather than trying to emulate something else. And naturally, Japanese developers create Japanese games. And I think it's their unique style of doing things their way that make them so appealing. Adding on to this from a business standpoint, I don't think they would ever stand out if they were simply trying to emulate the West. So this news is fantastic, great decision, love to see it. And if the video were to end here, it would end on a positive note. I would be like, yeah, Square Enix, you guys go. Unfortunately, things don't end here. If you recall earlier this year, Square Enix said they were interested in blockchain technologies and making blockchain games. This resulted in a near unanimously negative reaction. Fans across the world were incredibly clear. Nobody wants NFT games. Square wasn't the only company to announce this, however, many of the other companies that did announce it have backed down from it, simply due to how aggressive the backlash was. And ultimately, this showed them a lack of interest. Square Enix CEO Yosuke Matsuda, however, does not seem to be paying attention to this, as he has once again iterated his plans to make blockchain games. Unfortunately, with him saying in the same interview with Yahoo Japan that quote, in the future we would like to try our hand at providing autonomous game content. Until now, in most games, we provided the content as a finished product, and the players played that content. However, there are a certain number of players in the world who want to contribute to making games more interesting, by creating new settings and ways of playing. In the future, we want to utilize the power of these people to create games that will continue to evolve. There is a lot to unpack here, particularly the parts about how they provided content as a finished product and the players played that content. And now they seem to have realized that they outsource actually making the content to the players and then just sort of act as a platform that distributes and provides that content and takes a small fee of the players' sales. Then that allows for a really easy, effortless profit, doesn't it? This idea of play to earn sounds great only on a surface level, but the moment that you think about it on any deeper level, you realize that it's a terrible idea. It would be something that only 1-2% of players that are top creators would ever make any real money on, while the company sits back and skims off the top, all while never needing to provide you with a full complete game with exceptional content. On top of which, there's already games that are driven by community content. And guess what? They don't need a f blockchain in order to be able to do it. I am hard pressed to believe that games like Little Big Planet or Minecraft would be successful significantly better if they had NFTs in them. The good news is that Naoki Yoshida has made it clear that none of the games he's working on will be using the NFT technology, and he says that if Square were to make these games, they'd be separate titles on their own right, and not something that gets wormed in the Final Fantasy 14 or 16. So at the very least, you can rest easy on that. 
but don't be surprised if you end up seeing Kingdom Hearts blockchain of memories for mobile phones. Shout out to patron Afro Cloud and the rest of the Ultima community. Thank you.